What's up guys, welcome to your 14th tutorial in electronics and robotics. And this tutorial is going to be on something called breadboards. Now, as you guys could probably tell from our last couple of tutorials, when I built even simple circuits, all those alligator clips were kind of getting in the way and they were kind of getting tangled up and they became a little bit excessive. So, clearly when we build huge circuits with like hundreds of connections, these alligator clips aren't going to work because they're just too big, they are uh, won't stay on, you can't trust them. So we need, when we're testing, something better to use for our test. And that's why we got a breadboard. Now I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to show you guys exactly what this is and how it works. So here is my breadboard right here. And why this is easy is because instead of connecting wire to wire due to or from alligator clips or soldering or anything like that, what you have to do to use this is simply push one wire into one of these holes and another wire into another one of these holes and they connect. So how this works is that each of these little lines of holes right here, it has a little wire strip underneath it. So in the wire strips are in groups of five. So anytime you connect um, a wire in one of these holes, any hole alongside of it is already connected to that wire. So all you have to do is push in the wire and it automatically connects. Now, I told you that these are in groups of five. So that means that anything five or more away from it isn't going to connect. And I'll show you guys some examples later. But the only exception to this are these long lines up here with red and blue stripes on them. These are called buses. Now what a bus is, is pretty much a long or an extra long wire instead of five in a row. So these are pretty much for your main power. So and it just makes it easier to make a long strip so you don't have to keep connecting it. Since you're going to see later, um, it's going to run across the entire length of the breadboard. So whenever we power this whole strip, we're going to be able to more easily reach different parts of our breadboard. So another thing that you guys might notice is these things right here. These are binding posts. And the main use for these is when you have your main power source and your wires hooked up to that, it just helps stabilize the wires in there. Of course, the red one would go in the red binding post and the black one would go in the black binding post. Another cool thing about these little thing called binding posts is that they actually have little eyelets on top of them, or at least most breadboards do, where you can take a banana clip and plug it right into the top of your binding post. And this helps test and other things like that. So there are different types of wire you can plug into these little holes on your breadboard. The first thing you can do is order a jumper kit like this. And this is pretty much um, all different size wire that's custom made to fit into your breadboard. Just like that. Different sizes, different colors. Or you can get 22 gauge wire just like this. And make sure it's solid and not stranded. And with 22 gauge wire, all you have to do is strip the ends of it with a wire stripper and you'll be good to go. So now I'm going to zoom in and show you guys the combinations that work and what doesn't on a breadboard. 